products myself. And this is an example. There were multiple experiments in which I did this, also with visual uh, auditory incongruities and with visual olfactory incongruities, so differences between vision and sound and vision and smell. Um, and this is a visual textual incongruity, and I created sets of three products that all looked more or less the same, as much the same as possible, but that would feel different. So this is an example of a bench um, covered in tiles, which made it look like it was hard, but for one of them that was true, but for the other two that was not true. When you would sit on it, it would feel soft, so you could be surprised. And I um, studied people exploring such products, so I made experiment setups in which I showed people these products and I told them to sit on the bench and then observe them, what, look at their facial expression, at what they were saying, and at what they were doing, so their exploratory behavior. Because these are all things that can tell me um, things about how they experience a surprise reaction. And I also um, let people fill in questionnaires to get a subjective evaluation of what they were experiencing. So from these experiments, um, I learned a lot about surprise and about how people experience surprise. Um, and together, that led to the development of a two-stage model of surprise, which is shown here. I will not explain this in detail because it's a bit complicated for now. But what happens is that you, an event happens, um, which is appraised as unexpected, which results in a surprise. And after a surprise, a second stage um, happens in which people again appraise the surprise or the surprising product. And that can lead to different kinds.